that great young senator from the great state of Oklahoma, Senator Harris. The governor of my home state of Maine, Governor Curtis. That distinguished governor of the state of New Jersey, Governor Hughes. And my old and good friend from the great state of Michigan, Senator Phil Hart. And fellow delegates, and fellow Americans, May I first of all say, in behalf of myself and my wife Jane, a sincere thank you for your trust and for your confidence. For those who preferred someone else, I'd like to tell you of something that happened in my hometown in Maine late this afternoon. I learned of the Vice President's decision about four o'clock. It was too late for me to bring any of my family to Chicago. As a result, they were all besieged by reporters, and television people, an experience they weren't very accustomed to. And so my mother was asked by one reporter whether or not she expected to vote for me. And you'd be interested in her reply. She said, well, if no one offers anyone better, I suppose I will. That's one vote I'm going to have to work for. I didn't really expect that this opportunity and responsibility would come to me. Let me assure you that no Democrat from my state in my lifetime would ever expect to have the opportunity to speak to a, in a room of this many Democrats. And with that background, we have learned to be proud to be a Democrat in a state where it's hard to prove that it's a worthwhile status in life. And so my reaction to this responsibility and to this opportunity is a very mixed one. But above all else, it is an acute awareness of the work we have to do to build a peace, to heal our country, to make a society such as ours work is not easy. It means learning to live with, to understand, and to respect many different kinds of human beings, of different colors, of different races, of different national origins, of different cultural levels, of different tastes and intellectual capacities, of different educational attainments, of different social backgrounds, personalities, and dispositions, and to accept them all 
as equals. It means learning to trust each other, to work with each other, to think of each other as neighbors. It means diminishing our prerogatives by as much as is necessary to give others the same prerogative. It means respect for the rule of law as a dispenser of justice as well as a maintainer of order. It means giving all citizens an equal opportunity to participate in American life and in the policy-making processes of our society. And in all frankness, our society has not worked in this way up to now. There are risks in such a society because there is evil as well as good. There is meanness as well as generosity. There is dishonesty as well as honesty. And there is violence as well as peace. But these are risks we must take. There are those who believe that a society of this kind cannot work. To put their doubts in perspective, let us not forget that when we began this experiment in government, we did not instantly achieve an equal chance for every member of our society. But we did promise to work toward it. We made that promise because we believe that when men, however different, are free to grow, they will enlarge their intellectual and spiritual powers. They will achieve more satisfying lives for themselves. They will become better neighbors to others and they will make possible a more enlightened and a more civilized society. The practice of freedom since that time has made possible tremendous advances in the lives of the average citizen of our country. But ironically, those very advances have highlighted our shortcomings shortcomings which have denied hope for improvement to too many Americans, shortcomings which have concealed the reality of hunger, poverty, and deprivation for many under an illusion of prosperity and equality for all. We have learned painfully at times that freedom does not automatically correct the inequities, the injustices, and the human failings of any society. Freedom does not automatically create concern, understanding, and compassion in all citizens. And so we have learned that freedom does not work unless we work at it. And I might close by suggesting as a standard the words of a voice from an ancient democracy in Greece 
The words were these. We are capable at the same time of taking risks and of estimating them beforehand. Others are brave out of ignorance. And when they stop to think, they begin to fear. But the man who can most truly be accounted brave is he who best knows the meaning of what is sweet in life and of what is terrible, then goes out undeterred to meet what is to come. And so, my fellow Americans, let us make certain that we know the difference between what is sweet in life and what is terrible, and that we then go out undeterred to meet what is to come. It is in this spirit that I accept your nomination and will try to justify it.